Hi, I'm Levi Weaver. When I read a magazine, I often begin to equate that magazine to friends of mine. Music magazines bring to mind my musician friends. Sports magazines cause me to reminisce about friends who are fans of whatever team I'm reading about. And technology magazines might bring to mind my computer buddies. But when I read GQ magazine, there are only a couple of friends I'm reminded of. Those young and affluent guys who somehow bring total class to everything they do. One of them is a high-end antiques dealer with a multi-million dollar home. The other owns a members-only club, and I've never seen him in anything but a finely tailored suit. They both have excellent taste in fashion and wine, and seem to exude a silent confidence that whatever they do, they're going to be more successful at it than the next guy, just by entering the contest. But even for those of us who still struggle to make ends meet and can't find a good-fitting suit to save our lives, a GQ subscription still has a lot to offer by way of useful tips about fashion, food, or technology for the rest of us. Add to that the great articles, and you've got a winner. I don't need to be as driven as Kobe Bryant or date Miranda Kerr to get why those two people are interesting and attractive. I think anyone with a sense of humor or class can read GQ and appreciate the humor of being middle brow or snicker at a list of America's douchiest colleges or learn a little about the 25 best cocktail bars. But when I read the articles, I can't help but think about the fact that there are some guys who graduated from one of those universities or dropped out when they made their first million and can actually afford to go to all of those bars just to do it. And maybe that's why GQ works. It's the guy's guide to the American dream, right there in print form. GQ is the Frank Sinatra of magazines. Thanks for checking out my GQ magazine review today at magazines.com.